Just over a year ago, in January 2018, I tested my vitamin D level after two weeks in the subtropical Canary Islands, where I got lots of sun exposure most days, walking and training outside. To summarise why we need vitamin D, it helps the body absorb calcium and phosphate from our diet and is essential for healthy bones. We can get vitamin D both from hot sunshine and from certain foods. However, during winter at high latitudes, most people's vitamin D levels drop significantly because diet alone is not generally enough to get as close to the levels we can reach from exposure to sun. My measurement at the end of January 2018, a few days after getting back from my holiday, was 145 nanomoles per litre. This was a surprisingly high level, as it's well above the average for England, even for the end of summer, 60 nanomoles per litre, and as studies have found that even after extensive UV exposure, vitamin D levels typically start to plateau as they get up to around 70 to 80 nanomoles per litre. By the way, nanomoles per litre are standard units for vitamin D. However, nanograms per millilitre are also sometimes used. To convert to these units, you need to multiply by 0.4, or you can use an online converter. Possible reasons for my extra high level could include that I'd synthesised a lot of vitamin D from the sun in Lanzarote by gaining maximum exposure while taking care never to get sunburn, that I already had a very high level stored from the previous summer, that my dietary intake is very good, and more speculatively, that due to pale skin, I'm actually able to keep synthesising useful amounts of vitamin D at home in my garden well into late autumn and from early spring. I don't take any vitamin D supplements. So I thought it would be interesting to test my vitamin D a year on. You can actually watch me taking the home test in my video from a week ago. This winter I haven't been away for winter sun, so the only small top-ups I might have received are from doing a few exercise sessions in my backyard on particularly sunny days. As you can see in this video from the weekend before I took my vitamin D test, five days before to be precise. This time, my measurement was 70 nanomoles per litre. That's half the level from a year ago, but still above the English end of summer average of 60. For now, I'll just finish by taking a quick look at the question of what is an optimal level of vitamin D in general. Remember that so far I've only said that my levels are higher than average, which of course is not the same as saying they're optimal. In the US, the National Institutes of Health define less than 30 nanomoles per litre as deficiency, 30 to under 50 as inadequacy, 50 or over as adequate, and 125 to 150 as levels beyond which adverse effects are possible. In the UK, there seems to have been more caution about recommending levels of vitamin D above 50 nanomoles per litre, presumably because it would require mass supplementation for most people to maintain that level especially without significant UV exposure, and the evidence for the benefits of these high levels is still apparently inconclusive. So the focus has been on promoting a lower threshold of 25 nanomoles per litre, as can be seen in the recommendations of the Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition from 2016. The company I used, even though it's a British company affiliated with the National Health Service, appears to have been influenced by the US guidelines. And of course, it has an incentive to recommend the higher threshold, since this allows it to sell more vitamin D supplements. So I don't want people to worry about their level being below 50 just because of the guidelines they've seen in this video. The story may be more complicated. But please note that I don't have an opinion either way. I've just tried to be as factual as possible in researching this. Thanks for watching.